This video was produced by Hi, I'm Remy Pengel with the Center for Wind Energy at James Madison University, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a wind sock to measure the wind. So, um, you, usually we use uh, anemometers and wind vanes to measure the wind speed and direction, but today we're going to be making a wind sock that's going to allow you to do the same thing with very simple materials. So what you'll need to do this is a piece of paper from your copy machine, a roll of tape, a large paper clip, four pieces of yarn about 18 inches long, a hole puncher, a pair of scissors, and a bag that is not like a grocery bag. It's usually got straight edges and it's a little bit higher density plastic. These are harder to find, but as you can see, I got these at Justice, um, a girl's clothing store in the mall. So hopefully you can find those yourself. They're a little hard to come by. This is probably the hardest piece of this puzzle here. Um, and that is everything that we'll need today. The only other thing you might want to have on hand are some crayons. That white piece of copy paper gets a little boring and the kids may want to color it first before they make their windsock. So that's an optional piece. Okay, so to start, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that piece of paper and we're going to fold it into thirds lengthwise, so the long way. Doesn't have to be perfect thirds, but it definitely has to be the long way. So once you have it like this, one long piece of paper, we're going to roll it into a cuff, basically. So this is very hard for some of the younger children, so I um, I encourage the teachers to help with this part. And basically, you're looking to make a cylinder. And this is where the tape comes in. Staplers can work too if you don't have tape in your classroom for some reason, or uh, if you just prefer staples. But there you go. This is the opening to your windsock. So the second step here is to create the windsock part of everything. So with these high density bags, you don't need the whole bag. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the handle so that we just have a nice square. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll actually cut it in half. You can actually get two windsocks out of one bag, or you can make one really long windsock if you really want to. But in terms of classroom resources, this helps us quite a lot to be able to make two bag, two wind socks from one bag. Okay, so now we're going to cut strips or streamers into the bag, but you're going to stop maybe an inch from the top. And this one gets a little bit tricky for some of the younger kids as well, but I'll demonstrate here. And for these justice bags, it's nice because there's lines on it, so you can tell them, stop at the green line. And then they can do them as thick or as thin as they want. And this is definitely a skill set that some of the younger kids don't have yet, and they may need some help with, from a teacher. And I'm going to make some bigger ones just for time's sake. This is where, as a chef, I would have one ready in the background, right? OK, and once you have your shaky shakies all made, we're going to wrap this around the cuff that you made earlier. So with your tape, you're just going to tape the shaky shakies all the way around your cuff. And there you go. Now you have a little windsock. So the next step after this is to um, create the mechanism so you can hang your windsock outside. So we're going to punch three holes 
in the top of your windsock. pretty equidistant around. And then you have one, two, three strings. Actually, I have four, but I'm going to use the three longest. And you can do this any way you want. You can tie a knot right here. Um, but I prefer to go all the way up and double up my strings. And then what, I only have to tie one knot at the very top. So I'm going to thread them through. And then gather them all up. <clears throat> so this is pretty much where we're at. Now the large paper clip is going to act as kind of our junction box. So we're going to actually take all six of those pieces of yarn and tie it around that one end of the paper clip. Again, with the younger kids, you probably have to help them with this part. But there you go. And then that last piece of string allows you to do the same thing. But now you can take this and attach it to a branch and a tree in your yard or some other um, stick or something that you want to hang it on. And when you turn the fan on, you'll see it blow in the wind. And it's telling you not only the speed by how high it flies away from the ground or the angle that the string is at, but it also tells you the direction of the wind. So it's doing the same thing as our anemometer and wind vane, but with just some very simple materials. And that is very similar to what we call the Beaufort scale. So this is a nice. Um, way that you can relate what they're doing with their windsock to uh, what scientists do. And they basically can identify wind speed by looking at things in nature. So when the leaves rustle or a tree branch bends, it indicates a certain wind speed. And they're doing very sim something very similar with their windsock. So that's how you make a windsock. Have a good day.